Hey everybody, uh, we're gonna finish up our simple uh, backpropagation example with a little bit of Python coding. This will be review, good coding review for Python and help you with your conceptual understanding of neural nets and uh, backpropagation. Okay, remember in our uh, video lecture on backpropagation, we created the simplest model you could think of. We had an input and then we have a neuron that is, represents our output and this is absolutely the simplest neural network and, and our objective was to understand how to calculate W. So we went through several things. We went through uh, you know, the chain rule and then ideally we set some parameters. We had input value, we randomly assigned a uh, weight of 0.8 and then we had a target value of 0.5 for our output. And then we did, we wanted to calculate what the uh, outputs were. And so let's do that, let's do that in Python and kind of really drive this home conceptually. So I've kind of helped myself out here as I you know, put the constants here, W naught, W is our initial weight. I'm gonna use the same values that I used in the video lecture just so we can go through this. So something to remember, right, is just high level, is that uh, we, we, if we wanted to calculate D, D, C, D, W, we use the chain rule, which was ended up in D, C, uh, D, A times D, A, D, W. And then we had something called the cost function, which was our error, right? And so our error or cost function, we used a, a, a squared error. So I'll just write that out as C is equal to, we called it uh, A, which was our uh, output calculation, minus Y, which was our desired output. And then we squared that. So that's going to be my error function or cost function. And then we need to, to create a couple of functions. So we needed to create uh, basically uh, DC DW and to calculate that let's make that into a function we're going to pass in the values for for a y and our input now I used I as input usually use that in an in a iteration often in Python's but I used it as as the value for for input so let's see if we can remember the calculation here there's a couple of things that we needed to do so we needed to do um, DC DA, and then remember that um, to the derivative of, of uh, the cost function relative to A is just 2 times A minus Y. And we can just do that in our head here. Oops, let me make sure I get A minus Y. Okay, so that's going to be DC DA. Let's just put that in our function. And then we needed to do DA DW. And what is DA DW? And DA DW, remember, is A. Let's just go ahead and write that down as a is remember for a neural net, A, our, our calculated output, A, is going to be W times I. So that's a real simple calculate, calculation to do. DA, DW is just I. So now we have A, Y, and I as inputs to our function called DC, DW. And really what, what we want to return on this function is DC, DC, DA. Get my typing right here. And let's roll that up a little bit. DC DA times DA DW. All right, so you follow along. So now we've calculated DC DW. And remember um, what the equation for for the next W. And so let's let's just go ahead and assign, make W a list, and we'll append everything to the list so that we know uh, we can keep a track of all the W's. So let's make a list, uh, a W a list, and then the first thing in our list is going to be the initial W, which is W naught, okay? And let's go ahead and keep track of the A's as well. And then what we could we could make, uh, let's see, what would our A first A be? And that's gonna be W naught times I. All right, you guys, you guys with me? All right, so let's sit in a loop and see how many iterations of the loop with a, a learning rate of R. Remember, we used that in, in the video lecture as, as well. So let me see if we can go ahead and calculate this. So. Um, let's do this for, let's use J, not I, because we used I as our input for J in range from 0 to 100, so that's the maximum number of iterations that we'll run. And then what we want to calculate here is we want to, to calculate the next A, so we'll say A, and then we'll append A, let's take the, take the last A times, uh, times, or the last W, right? The last W, which is in, the, in this case, the first case will be W naught times the original input, all right, so which is I. So that will create a list 
of all our calculated outputs, we call that A, and then now I want to go ahead and calculate the next W, so let's do the same thing. So append W, and then remember that the, that the equation for W is the last W, all right, the previous W, which is W negative one, minus R times this function that we have up there, D, D, C, D, W, and we need to pass in A, the last A, a1, the last output, uh, y, uh, and y is our desired output, and the input, which is i, I think that's all correct. So that will keep track of all of the weights that we have, and now we want to, to have an if statement to determine when to stop, and that's a, that is our cost function. So remember that our cost function is a y, which is above, I can just copy that, so a y squared. Now we got to be real careful here. Is that the a is actually the the last a, the, the last a that we calculated, which is we do some slicing in Python. It's a negative one minus the desired output, which is y, which is 0 0.5 squared. Let's say if this is less than 0 0.001, let's break our loop. All right. I hope you guys are following where I'm at. And then when we get finished, let's just say print. A, so A should be converging on the desired output, which is 0.5, and just for fun of it, let's uh, let's let's do this. Let's, let's do a little carriage, a little space there, and then print W. All right, let's see where my errors are. Let's run this code, and hopefully everything works, but probably there's an error somewhere. Boom. Run this guy. C, oh, I meant to comment that out. Let's just do this. C, so this is our error function. Remember that. That's what I was trying to do there. Okay. Run again. Oh, yeah. All right, so A started out as 1.2, that's right. And then it's converging, converting, converging to 0.5. Yep, it's going to 0.52. Now we had a learning rate of 0.1, so that's probably having an impact. And let's see, if we multiply 0.34, which is our last weight, times 1.5, which was our original input, yep, we should get close to 0.5. Let's do something real quick here. Let's change this to 0.01 and see how that impacts. So we should have more iterations and we should converge a little bit better since we're not overshooting. So let's go ahead and run that. Ooh, look at all the, num the number of calculations. So just for the fun of it, let's print out J here and see how many time, how many iterations that we ran. 68 iterations and we converged at 0.53 in this case. Okay, and then came up to 0 0.35. Uh, 0 0.35 was our final weight. All right, so quick review there of um, how to implement backpropagation. Now this gets much more complicated. We did not include something called the activation function. And in the chain rule, if you know the derivative of the activation function, it just becomes another variable that you have to account for. I mean, those are counting challenges in neural nets, and we just add that to the chain rule. So I kind of looked over that because actually the the derivatives for the activation functions are very simple. The, sometimes the math, like the signal one, is fairly complex, but the derivatives turn out to be pretty simple, either a zero or one. So uh, I left that up to you to kind of research that, but here was a quick overview of how to implement backpropagation on the simplest neural network that you can imagine, a one node and one input uh, network. All right, until next time.